Okay, I'm gonna try to make this video pretty quick. This is going to be my top 10 favorite Photoshop keyboard shortcuts or hotkeys if you must. Number one right off the bat is spacebar. If you hold in spacebar, I've mentioned this before, if you hold in spacebar, nothing happens because I don't have Photoshop selected. If you hold in spacebar, it turns whatever you're using with your cursor into a little tiny hand and then you can scoot around your canvas however you so choose. And this is really handy, pun intended, because these arrows down here, doing this with the sliding arrows, not working, it's not a good thing. I don't like it at all. I just got a text message. Number two is just holding in command in general. By the way, I'm working on a Mac, obviously, if you're using a PC, please adjust accordingly. Holding in command will turn whatever your cursor is, whatever tool you have selected, into the move tool. There are a lot of things that you can't do unless you have this tool selected. So sometimes it's a lot easier just to have it really quickly. So that allows you to move things. It also allows you to do other things that you can't do if you have another tool selected. Number three, if you hold in command and you click minus or plus, if you click minus, you zoom out. If you click plus, you zoom in. Very simple, very easy, very effective. You zoom into her butt. Number four is Command plus T. Now this will take whatever is in your layer. So if I had more than one thing in this layer, it would include this in the bounding box, but it puts a bounding box around whatever's in your layer so that you can resize if you'd like to. Little tip, I guess this is sort of number five, is just holding in shift in general. Holding in shift does a lot of different things, basically to help keep things proportional, to keep things in line with stuff, to keep things straight. Hold in shift when you're resizing, if you grab the corner. If you don't hold in shift, you can do this. If you do hold in shift, it's gonna keep this character proportional so that you don't have to worry about her getting all squashed or weird looking. Holding shift also, if you have the move tool selected by holding in command BT dubs, and you hold in shift, say I wanted her to move on this plane in a straight way and I don't want her to like slide all over the place, if you hold in shift beforehand, I can't move her up or down. She is stuck in this plane, which can be really handy. Conversely, if you did the same thing and you moved her up and down, now I can't move her left or right. So this will be really easy if you were trying to move something and you just wanted to keep it in line. Holding in shift will help you do that. Holding in shift will also help you if you're drawing. If you want to draw a straight line, you hold in shift. I can't go anywhere but in this straight line. That makes it a million times easier if you're just trying to draw a simple little rectangle or something like that. Very handy, much easier than trying to draw a straight line yourself. Okay, where are we now? Number six is to invert your selection. So if you have something selected, let's say we have this little girl selected, and I'm gonna paint on a layer above her, and I don't wanna paint inside her, I wanna paint the outside of her. I would hit Command, Shift, I. That's gonna invert the selection so now the outside is selected and not her. Number seven, command alt click. This might be one of my favorite tools. Now I say command because you need this tool. Remember how I said sometimes you need the move tool already selected before you can do other things? So you need to have this selected before you do this. If you hold in alt, do you see how there's two triangles now? This is going to duplicate whatever is in this layer or whatever is selected. So right now it's just the entire layer, so I just made twins. It's gonna copy it onto a separate layer, so it's not gonna get, so you're not gonna run into issues with that. Or if I just had something selected, like say her hair, and I just wanted a copy of that, now we have a floating hair. Going along the lines with having things selected, if I had her hair selected, I didn't want the marching ants going around it anymore, I didn't want that selected because I wanted to do other things. Command D, deselects. Now the next two are specifically in the layers panel, so we'll move over here to the right where the layers panel is. If you have a layer selected and you hit command J, it's going to duplicate the layer on top of the other layer. So you have a new layer now. It will also do that for things that you have selected. So if you just have her hair selected again and you just wanted another hair in the exact same spot on a separate layer, command J, now you have a layer that's just her hair, but it didn't take away the hair below it. Number 10 is one that I've learned more recently, probably in the last couple of years, but it's something that I found to be really useful, basically for making easy masks. So if you hold in command before you click the layer, it's gonna select what's inside that layer to the best of its abilities. I know that you could use like the magic wand tool and maybe you can select outside of her and then you inverse it. And yeah, it's gonna get it's gonna get pretty close, but in my opinion, I just feel like this really does a good job of 
of really getting tight around the actual shape. What I find this especially useful for is if we wanted to do something like shading on her shirt, you would make a new layer. You already have her selected. Ooh, I just realized bonus, bonus keyboard shortcut number 11. I, very simple eyedropper tool. If you want to choose that exact color, you hit I. Well, let's make it a little darker. We'll drop the hardness down and we can shade just within that selection without getting anything out here. I hope that you, oh my goodness, my friends. Leave me a comment below letting me know if you use Photoshop, what is your favorite keyboard shortcut? Maybe you have one that you use all the time that wasn't mentioned in this video. I know there's tons of them. I could make an entire video probably just on ones that I use when I draw in Photoshop specifically because I'm looking to pick up on ones that I haven't learned about before as well. But thanks so much for watching. If you like this video or if you found it useful, let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys next week.